I'm John Engate, CTO of Rackspace, and I'm joined up here on the stage uh, Martin Casado uh, from NYSERA, Tom Lunibus from uh, SOSTA, Lou Mormon, president of the Rackspace, uh, Rackspace and, and kind of really the founder of our cloud computing uh, efforts at Rackspace, really big, big uh, uh, part of that over the years. Rackspace, um, we're proud of Lou, he's been a, a, a racker for uh, what, um, 12 over 12 years. years. 12, 12 years. years. Yeah, so Lou and I uh, started at Rackspace a long time ago together, uh, pretty early on, and We've seen a lot of change, and so this is this is big change. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to uh, grasp in some ways how how much has changed in terms of this. So, Lou, maybe you just give us your thoughts on what's going on, and maybe perspective on on how you think this is changing Rackspace or changing the the uh, uh, yeah, the industry. Well, first of all, it's a it's an exciting day, and I am so proud of the the Rackers that are here and are around the world actually who contributed to this. Uh, we've been hard at work on transforming our business really for the last couple of years as we've made the transition from an operations driven hosting business uh, to a software driven cloud business. And that really is the fundamental shift that's happened. And uh, two years ago, we really made a commitment to help drive an open platform. Uh, we think the world needed it. Um, it fits really well with our strategy, which is about creating great customer experiences. And the faster um, the innovation can happen, the better. And uh, it's really taken hold. I'm, I'm, I'm just unbelievable. We're staying at the hotel across the street uh, or down the way where the OpenStack conference is, is being held. And, and I think that there's going to be a thousand folks there, wow. which makes it one of, if not the biggest open source conferences that exists. And that's because the world needs an open cloud platform. And I'm very proud of the company, uh, Rackspace and Rackers, to be able to bring it uh, to life in a production public cloud, uh, you know, starting right now. Right. So it's, it's really great. Really, really exciting day. So, Martina, let's let's turn over to you for a second. Sure. You uh, you were one of the guys behind the uh, the technology at NYSERA. Can you just tell us what? You know, I I mentioned it in our last piece, but maybe you could maybe do a little better job telling us what NYSERA does, what your sure. technology does, and a little about about you and your background. Yeah, sure. So, um, I'm the, uh, the the founder and CTO of NYSERA, and uh, the the best way to think about what NYSERA does is it it allows you to do networking. Um, in a way that's suitable for the cloud. That is, um, all the functionality is implemented in software, it's compatible with any type of, of networking hardware, and you get the same operational model for your network that you get for, for your servers, or like for a, a virtual machine. So you can create networks dynamically, um, you can spin them up, you can move any workload kind of anywhere, um, and you can do this in a way that's fully programmatic. Now you guys are collaborating with OpenStack, and you're part of the OpenStack project, and, and yeah. tell us what you've done there. Sure, so in my view, um, what's so exciting about OpenStack is it's really um, a, a, a huge, it's, it's a huge movement towards infrastructure being consumed by software, right? This is, this is, this is uh, the storage, this is the um, compute, and of course this is the network. And so what we're interested in is for the networking piece, um, to be, have the same flexibility as the other two pieces. So we've been working and leading a project called Quantum, and this is to try and create an API, an open API for network virtualization. And so if you, you, if you run Quantum within, within your OpenStack cloud, you have a vendor neutral interface for controlling your network, and under the covers, this can all be uh, programmed dynamically and provisioned dynamically using a solution like, like Nasira's or, or anybody's solution for that matter. Yeah. So, so, uh, Tom, uh, Martin used the word open and he used it a number of times. What does open mean to you and to your customers? Creativity and, and speed to market more often than not. I think pretty much everything that we do in the cloud computing really came from an open uh, environment or initiative. And, and so what it's done is accelerated our progress. Uh, it's allowed more people into the game. It's improved our products. It's improved the experiences that our customers have. Uh, it's core to everything we do, whether it's cloud computing these days or mo mobile computing these right. days. And so uh, it, it has advantages that go well beyond a simple, simple term right. of open. I think, you know, particularly for, for Tom's business, you know, he needs, and he talked about it earlier, he needs clouds to exist everywhere. Yep. I mean, it's in every country in the world probably. Right. And the, the possibility of a robust, reliable, um, you know, 
enterprise caliber cloud being built in any country in the world is now really a possibility. Right. Because of he told staff. me before this uh, session he needs them in specific states nowadays. So the, the, they yeah. want a, a customer of his might want it in yeah. a particular state in the U.S., not just a yeah. region or a, a continent, but it's you know. Well, down to the we live in a mobile world, right? So for my particular application or service, we're we're trying to simulate traffic. And not just in physical countries, but uh, in cities that are very populated or even remote areas that are populated because our customers are trying to understand the user experience for somebody in Des Moines as much as they're trying to figure out what Moscow is like or London or Hong Kong. So, you know, all of this breadth of creativity that open source allows us to, to move. And, and most people don't know it, but SOSTA evolved out of an open source initiative uh, called Selenium. And, and so, all of this creativity means a faster uh, move to market, a broader expansion for us as a company. Uh, it's pretty exciting, and it, it, it and you have to go back to open standards. Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, it's it's uh, it is pretty exciting what's going on around OpenStack. I mean, uh, Tom, your your company sort of looks at OpenStack as a as a platform to build your business on. Martin sees it as a as an avenue to go and talk to customers about about building. I mean, you know, this design summit that's going on this this week in San Francisco, super big event, like Lou said. Lots of new companies involved. I mean, you guys, maybe you guys can have seen some of the news. Who's who's so exciting for you, Martin, that, that's sort of part of this now that you think is going to really uh, push this thing or, or change the dynamics? I mean, there's a lot of companies that are joining. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think I think just the level of support um, alone from the big companies like you know HP. Um, IBM, Red Hat, really um, has, is going to make OpenStack the, the, the de facto standard. And, and you, need it, you need a de facto standard if you're really going to change the world of IT. You need it. And so I think looking at these very large companies is kind of a bellwether of, of, of things to come. Yeah. So, um, it, no, Martin, let me ask you one more question. You, sure. you guys, uh, you, you sort of talked about the, the technology that, that you've built, but where did where did you guys come from? What, where did this technology originate? Yeah, so um, so, so a lot of the, the, the core technology that came from this year uh, was a joint research project between um, Stanford and, and and Berkeley. And at the time, what we were interested in doing is we wanted to make the network as programmable as as compute was. Because I've heard this term uh, software defined right. yeah, yeah. networking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it everywhere I go. Yeah. Every <laughs> conference they use that yeah. term. They want to hear more about it. Right. Well, I mean, the, the, the idea actually came from when I used to work with the intelligence agencies, and it was kind of interesting that you know they they had. Um, the, this, you know, they would assume kind of a nation state was attacking them, right? They're these kind of very severe threat environments, and they were able to take their computers and, and, and manage them in the way that they thought they were secure. But for the network, they couldn't buy networks that were secure enough, or they couldn't make them secure enough. And you have this kind of strange uh, you know, paradox that you're in the infrastructure, and there's a piece of it is something that's totally programmable, and you have another piece that was totally inflexible. And so the basis of all of this work, which is this joint research um, effort when I went to Stanford between Stanford and Berkeley, like how do you make networks as flexible, as vendor independent? Yeah, we had sort of solved the compute and the storage for, was something exactly that right. was more or less, you know, in the enterprise pretty taken care of, but that's the right. network was this sort of black box right. that no one knew exactly how to, how to make programmatic. And that's really what cloud computing is all about too, is right. putting a, an API on, on the front end of this technology so you can drive it with scripts and with technology that we're, we've been talking well, and, about today. And the fact that you can now bring up compute storage all over a facility or all over the world so easily mm -hmm. has made even more networking problems. Right. right. Yeah. And you know, the traditional technologies sort of have scaling limits and, yeah, they hit a and wall. so many other issues is that sort of this is becomes one of the sort of the last areas where we really have to innovate right. if the cloud's going to take the next step. Yeah, and we, we call it kind of the 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 law of any, which is the holy grail is to be able to run any workload anywhere over any hardware. I mean, that, 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 that's where we want to go. And like something like OpenStack is, is, is necessary to provide both the standards and the install bases in order to do that. And one of the big hurdles is the networking piece, which is I want to be able to spin up a workload and move it between data centers, for example, or at the granularity of a state or even a city. Um, so what do you think of what we launched today with cloud networks? I mean, well, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think it's going to set the model, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> really. So Tom, back to you for just a second. You, you know, we, we talked about a lot of products here. You guys are um, you know, using cloud servers or, or you know, compute. And do, you, do the other products resonate with you or your customers or your team? Oh, I, actually, uh, a couple of my guys are here today. They've already tweeted me about the, the block storage stuff. They, oh yeah, you know, I think, I'll try I think, it out. 
I think <laughs> everything that, that you know. What's great about our, our all of our businesses is that we're evolving based off of customer demands or use cases and such. And we started off four years ago not really understanding any of this problem. You know, we kind of had a basic understanding. Uh, for us, we started off with there was one data center uh, four years ago. Now there is. Uh, 50 or so data centers, maybe 100 or so data centers, and now we're starting, hopefully with OpenStack, opening up potentially thousands of locations around, and it, it creates new opportunities and new challenges as we evolve. So what we really appreciate, what we saw today, is the continua continuation of innovation that Rackspace is delivering, both themselves, yourselves, as well as to the OpenStack community, which is accelerating those changes. because. What we do today is nothing compared to what we did or we're going to do in four years from now. And so the rate of innovation is going to have to accelerate uh, in a much higher order. And what I saw today from Rackspace is pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Hey, Lou. Um, we have built a, a you know, I think it's pretty cool. You think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. what, we, we launched a lot of new products today. What, what, what sort of, why did we launch so many products? What was the... Uh, well, look, I think that where there, would, where'd you know, that come from? There's, there's no question a linchpin is the transition of the compute product over to, to OpenStack. And all the other work we've been doing for the last 18 months, two years, has really been around uh, around that center of the universe, uh, or that, that universe. So the, the database products, the monitoring products, the block storage, all of that sort of depends on that core compute platform. Right. And so this really is sort of, it's why we talk about the next generation, because this really enables us to do so much more. And there's a lot planned that we haven't talked about. Um, you know, the, one of the other things I would say is that as a design principle that I'm really proud of is how our teams have really sought to make the cloud experience feel like a traditional experience. Is that you can put databases in the cloud, but you don't have a massive performance hit um, like you have typically. Um, you can put workloads in there, but you can have uh, VLAN-like capabilities just done the cloud way. Um, the ability to sort of get enterprise type features um, so you can run mission critical applications has really been behind sort of how we design this stuff. Mm -hmm. But really getting on Nova has been the, the linchpin piece. Yeah, that's sort of the foundation that we started with. And it enabled us to do a lot of these other things. Yeah. You know what I've appreciated so much being in the testing market is the use of the term performance. Not often is performance actually talked about within the cloud and it's beginning to be talked about yeah. a lot more as more and more critical applications are going to it. And this morning, you guys must have used the term performance at least seven or eight times, which means it's on your mind. Right. And that's really important for all customers out there to look for platforms that are not only going to deliver access and availability and affordability, but also high performance and quality of service. And so I, th I really commend you guys for that because you don't always hear that at a cloud conference or, yeah. or in a developer environment. Well, I, you know, I think uh, there is some advantage to, to uh, you know, seeing what the cloud has done and sort of working and building on top of it. I think the, there, there's a lot of innovation going on with, within OpenStack, these guys that all have, I mean, that's one of the powerful aspects of an open community is everybody's got a little bit different need and a little different take on what a cloud ought to be and so much innovation going on there. I mean, I don't, I, uh, I, I don't think I have much else to talk about. Maybe if anybody has any uh, closing yeah. thoughts or predictions or things you're, you're excited, <laughs> really excited about, maybe I'll just yeah. let everybody have a quick turn. So I, I think ultimately, OpenStack is about the transformation of IT. And I know that sounds really grandiose, but at the end of the day, we are changing the way we do business. We're changing the way we do business in industry. We're changing the way we do the business in universities and in government, right? And in order to do that, workloads need to be flexible. They need to be able to be spun up anywhere and move anywhere, right? That's how we outsource operations. That's how we change the business model. And this is billions of dollars. Actually, it's probably a $100 billion market that's going to be shaken free. And in order to have this, this transformation of IT, you need to have an open standard. And a lot of the functionality of infrastructure has to go into software, right? Otherwise, you won't have the flexibility and you won't have the innovation. And so what's so exciting to me to hear about what Rackspace is doing, um, the multiple products that are being launched, and then OpenStack in general, is really, I feel like we're at the cusp of this large transformation. I think this is going to be the inflection point OpenStack is. I'm really excited to be here. Great. Really excited. I, I carry forward that concept and that view. I, I'll, I'll give a more barometer of being in the cloud for four years. The fact that you guys are releasing four or five products in a single day, we would have, for the last four years, rolled out a product in you know, maybe a quarter. And so yeah. it really talks about the rate of innovation increasing. And I yeah. think for the last four years, we've been building the platform of cloud computing, or uh, really of the cloud itself. And 
I think right at the moment of time, and this particular moment of time, Lou and I were talking right before we got on, that the acceleration towards OpenStack, it could be OpenStack itself, uh, or the acceleration towards open platforms or platforms as a service that are moving. Cloud is really growing up very quickly in the last month or so, uh, as much as I've seen in the previous year. And the rate of acceleration is going to continue to move to, it, it, it's almost hard to understand where we're going to go because for the last, we're really tearing down everything we built for 40 years and building a whole new generation of yeah, platform of deployment right. and such. And so I, I think the rate of building that 40 years is going to go much quicker in an open environment like we, we have today. So it's exciting time. It is exciting. Yeah. Lou, anything? Well, look, I think that these guys have said it very well. <laughs> I'm glad to, to hear it. I mean, I do think that it's hard for us that have been in the industry for a while to think that it's early days but I absolutely think it is early days. And modern computing lives in the data center. And that data center is run by cloud software. And you know, I think that the, the presence of an open, an open standard is something that is going to be extremely powerful. It's already powerful for us. It's going to be powerful for many others. Just imagine how the web, how slowly it would have moved if there hadn't been Linux. Um, I mean, the web was built on the back of Linux and all the innovations that came around it. Um, we have a new operating system, and it lives it, it runs the cloud, and um, you know I think the work that's happening uh, down the street is really exciting, and we're we're certainly thrilled to be part of it, and we're certainly thrilled to be launching products around it. Great, I think we're going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for joining me, uh, Martin, Tom, Lou. Thanks for being on the panel, and thanks for coming to join us today, and thank you in the audience and out there to uh, uh, for coming to join us today as well. Uh, we're super excited, very happy to have you here, and and a uh, lot more to come. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.